The last Ronin told the story of the final Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo, in his last days as he sought revenge for the deaths of his brothers and fathers. Our story has been showing Mikey prepping for the final battle with Hiroto, but he needs to prove himself defeating Deathworm and his gang in Korea first. Meanwhile, in the present day, the young turtles are being taught how to even be brothers. This is Comic Story, and where I read stories from comic books to you as an audio drama so that you know what to add to your collection. And today is the last Ronin, Lost Years 3 and 4. Our story begins in the present day, after the battle of Mikey and Hiroto, current New York. April and Casey are preparing dinner for the new turtles, but Yi comes into the kitchen crying as blood is dripping from her fingers. Oh man, little girl, how'd you manage that? Casey asks as she bends down. I was trying to slice some wires in Grammy's garage, but I slipped and now I'm going to die. Yi says tearfully as Casey continues to make dinner. April bandages up Yi's finger and kisses it better. And they all sit down to eat as she tells the children another story from the past about how she decided she was going to spy on the purple dragons because the rest of them were busy. But she wasn't as skilled as them and was discovered. Luckily, Casey and the turtles arrived to save them. Even though my heart was in the right place, my mind and body weren't quite ready for the job. I still needed help, and that was perfectly okay. April tells the children. But now we go to the past. Mikey's journey to defeat Deathworm, Inner Mongolia. Mikey looks up in shock. The world around him is dark. What's happening? Why is it so dark? I can't see. But we see you, creature. A voice calls out. Mikey turns in fear as someone enters and prepares ropes. Leo? Is that you? There is no Leo here, creature. There is only us. The voice says ropes are suddenly lashed around him as the voice explains that they must proceed with caution. Mikey tries to struggle but is cracked in the back of the head with a rifle and dropped to the ground. Mikey is brought to a cart and carried away, his head swimming as he climbs in and out of consciousness, remembering what brought him to Mongolia. After leaving Korea, Mikey and his brother's spirits arrived in China which had been destroyed by a tremendous earthquake. The air stung Mikey's lungs, and they could see the destroyed nuclear power plants leaking radioactive material into the skies. When they finally arrived in Mongolia, Mikey was sick and was about to pass out. He swerved the car until it smashed into a tree, throwing his body to the ground outside, and when he opened his eyes again, he couldn't see. Now Mikey awakens to the sounds of a vast camp. Can't see! Mikey gasps softly. The voice of the warrior that captured him rides up. Then you are fortunate that we take you to Chormong Noan, creature, for he sees all. Perhaps he will help you if you are worth, the warrior says, revealing his name to be Batu. So Mikey is brought to Chomong Noan, the elder of the Mongolian tribe. Noan asks Mikey what he seeks in Mongolia, and Mikey explains that he is hunting Deathworm. An enemy that I've sworn to defeat. I've chased across three countries, but now something's wrong. My eyes. I'm blind, Mikey says. Noan nods, explaining that he is also blind and he is also dealing with Deathworm. So they release Mikey and they offer him tea. Noan reaches out his hands, feeling Mikey's face and sensing that he is a noble warrior. As the enemy of my enemy is my friend, I would invite you to join us as one of our Nokond, soldier and free man. Mikey is bewildered. But my eyes, he says. Noan shakes his head. Do not fret about that. I will show you how. So Mikey is brought into the tribe and is paired with Geral, a young girl who aids him in the tasks due to his sightlessness. As he becomes known throughout the tribe, Noan and Batu begin to train him without his sight. Mikey learns to see with his other senses, eventually becoming a skilled warrior even without his eyesight. For a time, Mikey knows peace. He has found a new family, a new clan. It's one day that Batu brings him to the weapons tent, explaining that Deathworm has raided the countryside villages, claiming that he is descended from Genghis Khan and that by right rules all of Mongolia. Batu shows him the captured firearms that Deathworm's thugs are using, but amongst the captured weapons, Mikey finds something else. Tomfas with an electrical charge running through them. Mind if I borrow these? He asks with a smile as he wields the weapons, beginning to train with the powerful weapons as Geralt watches on. But eventually Mikey pulls her onto his horse. All right, time for my swim, 
Mikey has learned to see with his other senses so strongly that occasionally he swims in the nearby lake so that he can block out everything. Beneath the dark waters, Mikey can hear only the spirits of his brothers, who compliments him on his training with the Tomfits. But suddenly there is something else, and a sharp metal splashes into the water. Wait, did you guys hear that? Is that freaking bullets? The brothers shout, and only Mikey can hear them. Mikey comes out of the water in a fury just in time to sense Geralt has been struck by bullets. The young girl screams, falling to the ground, and Mikey charges up, slamming into the nearby thugs. Another tries to reload his rifle and turn it on Mikey, but the Ronin grabs the weapon, smashing it before throwing the thug to the ground. Then he is suddenly surrounded, and the thugs fire tasers at him, bringing him to the ground. The sharp barbs stab into his face, and electricity surges through his body as Mikey is screaming in pain and collapses. But there's a flicker in his eyes, and he could suddenly see his hand. M my eyes! I could see! He gasps. But a thug comes up behind him, cracking him across the head with a rifle. Mikey collapses to the ground, looking up, tears in his eyes as he sees his new home burning in the distance. And Geralt, dead a few feet away. Then nothing but darkness. We now go to current day, with Odin and Moja moving fast. Taking out the two guards at the door and motioning for Yi to move forward and take out the lock. Uno is watching from the rear but decides that his siblings are taking too long as he leaps down, smashing through the door, surprising everyone. They stand in the doorway, and paintballs begin to fly out, hitting them all. You're all dead, Casey says as she stands up. She steps forward, explaining to Uno that he has become too impatient, that she understood he thought that he could do everything himself, but he has to learn to put that ego aside and work as a team. Uno doesn't argue, bowing before her. Yes, Sensei, he says. Back in the past, we continue with Mikey as he readies himself inside the cage, his body bruised as everyone cheers. The cheers get louder as the announcer begins to speak. And so it has come to this, my friends, the grand finale, the fight to end all fights, a battle royale for the ages, the Turtle Tian. Last of the monsters, the spectacular Shaka, heroic human champion. Mikey looks across the blood-soaked arena at his friend who is preparing himself for the battle. And then he looks up to see Abigail Finn, the leader and announcer of the blood sport. Freedom to the victor! Death to the loser! Kill or be killed! She bellows into her microphone. Shaka looks at Mikey and bows his head. It's time, Michelangelo. We must see this through. He says, and Mikey thinks about how everything has led him to this point. He knows that his friend is right, and the two charge at each other. After being captured in Mongolia, Mikey had been placed into a truck. He was alone except for the spirits of those that he had failed. Finally, they stopped and Mikey was pushed off the truck, finding himself in a large camp-like prison structure. That was when he met Finn. Well, you're quite the specimen, aren't you? I thought there'd be more surprises for me when it came to your kind. Abigail Finn says, introducing herself. Mikey is led through the camp as doctors check his body and place small bombs in his neck. Remotely activated, so if you're thinking about running away, think again. It'll be a short run, I promise. Mikey is then led to the rest of the prison where he is thrown into the caged yard with the rest of the mutants. He barely makes eye contact with anyone, merely cutting into a ball near the fence line. Memories of everyone that he has failed filling his mind, but a voice calls out to him from the other side of the fence. A bit of a vice. Any weakness you show now will not be forgotten in the cage, Shaka says to him. Introducing himself, Mikey gets to his feet, shaking the human's hand. And with that done, Shaka motions to the camp, explaining that the humans in mutants are separated into two groups, but they both share a common purpose. They're being trained to fight, to give the ultimate show, with the final mutant and human being pitted against each other in the end. The bombs in their necks are there to stop any of the prisoners from escaping. We live and train here, but not for much longer. Rumor is we're going to be moving west, with a final fight in Ukraine. Last human versus the last mutant. Battle for the big prize. Freedom. And freedom means I can hunt down and kill the real enemy. Mikey nods as he looks around. Death worm. I hate this, Shaka. Mikey says quietly to his friend and the warrior nods. You are not alone, my friend. That night, the two warriors rush at each other as Mikey grabs Shaka in a headlock. But the human twists, throwing him to the ground, and he reaches out, grabbing a hold of an axe. If these scullies want to show us, give them one! 
He shouts as he swings the weapon, but Mikey manages to grab a mace off the ground, blocking the attack. As Shaka is pressing his own attack, Mikey looks up at his friend. Please, I can't do this, he gasps, but Shaka smiles at him. You don't have to. Just promise me one thing. When you get your pound of flesh, get some for me! Shaka says with a wink, and he suddenly pulls away, whirling, throwing the axe through the air. It flies out of the cage, slashing Finn across her arm. The boss yells in pain and anger, ordering her men to detonate the bomb in Shaka's neck. Mikey screams as his friend suddenly explodes before him, his smoking body hitting the ground. And that brings us to the conclusion of issue four of The Last Ronin, The Lost Years. Now, August 2nd is going to be the release of the final issue from what I'm reading. So when that drops, we'll be bringing it to the channel very soon so that you get the full Last Ronin story that exists as it stands. I hope you guys enjoyed today, and thank you so much for your continued support here at Comic Storian. If you want to get early access to our content, then go ahead and subscribe at YouTube memberships or join us at Patreon. But other than that, I just like thanking you guys for the time you spend watching my videos. The fact that you'll spend 10 minutes just listening to me rant and rave about the turtles really does mean a lot to me. So thank you, and I'll see you next time right here at Comic Storian.